Kyle Larson says that he's better than Max Verstappen. Kurt Busch gets arrested and Richard Schiller's racing plans to appeal Austin Dillon's penalty. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Has everybody calmed down from NASCAR's penalty report on Wednesday? Because if you look at some of the comment sections on my videos, it appears that somebody threw napalm into these. It's like I called Taylor Swift untalented and the Swifties are after me. People are absolutely furious. So we're not going to talk about that to start because honestly, I'm kind of sick of talking about this penalty, a much deserved penalty for Austin Dillon and for Joey Logano, a fine at that. Instead, we are going to talk about Kyle Larson, who said, quote, I know I'm a better all around driver than him, unquote. Who was he saying that about? Max Verstappen. Now, the United States and the Netherlands have typically had pretty good diplomatic relations. They wear wooden shoes. They know we'd kick their ass. They help. We help them when they need it. They just exist over in Europe. But Kyle Larson apparently is out here just trying to burn down every bridge that we have. Somebody get the ambassador on the line because he went scorched earth on Max Verstappen. And he's not wrong. Honestly, it wasn't really scorched earth. He was just being blunt Larson. Um, but factually, he's correct. Kyle Larson is a better all-around race car driver than Max Verstappen. There's no way that you can dispute that. You have people on Twitter being like, Max is really good on iRacing. Congratulations, he's good at a video game. I'm really good at college football 25. Does that mean I should go be the head coach? Absolutely not. I would be terrible at it. The same way that Max would probably not be very good at half the races that he's doing on iRacing. And that's not the same. Max Verstappen's a bad race car driver. Max Verstappen is a really, really good open wheel driver. He climbed the open wheel ladder. He's a great Formula One driver in a great car. He's very talented, not taking that away from him. He absolutely demolishes his teammate every single time they're on the racetrack. It's not even close. It's like when you put a single A player up into the major leagues and they just get absolutely blasted away and they're like 96 mile an hour. Oh boy. I've been hitting 77 by a guy that's 45 still trying to make it to the majors. Yeah, okay, that's, it's bad. So for Kyle, yeah, he is a better all-around race car driver than Max. There's no disputing that. And after he won the Knoxville Nationals on Saturday night, he gave some quotes. And yeah, I'm going to read them to you real quick. Kyle says, I know in my mind I'm better than him as an all-around driver. There's no way Max can get into a sprint car and win the Knoxville Nationals. There's no way he can go win the Chili Bowl. There's no way he can win a cup race at Bristol. There's probably no way I can win a Formula One race at Monaco, but I think I'd have a better shot at him just because of the car element. That's what gives me the ease and confidence that, like, I know I'm better than him. Maybe not in an open wheel Indy car or Formula One car, but that's one discipline. I think I would beat him in everything else. You can quote that. So Blunt Kyle Larson is absolutely back. The you can quote that is the hardest line that Kyle Larson has ever said in his entire life. The confidence that this guy has is absolutely incredible right now. If you want to bet on a NASCAR Cup Series, at least Final Four driver, Kyle Larson should absolutely be in that because nobody in racing at the moment has more confidence than that guy. He's won his last five sprint car starts, including the Knoxville Nationals. He won the Brickyard 400. He's got four NASCAR Cup Series wins this year. He's got an Xfinity Series win. He wins in everything that he gets in. I mean, when people... People, I know the Europeans are going to have a hard time grasping this, right? You simple brains, the beans on toast, mouth breathers are not going to be able to understand the diversity of Kyle Larson's racing resume. He, of course, NASCAR Cup Series champion, 27 NASCAR Cup Series win. He has a bunch of Xfinity wins. He has NASCAR Truck Series wins. He, <laughs> he has uh, wins in both non-wing sprint, wing sprint, midgets, dirt lay model, dirt modified. He has should have had a top five at the Indianapolis 500, uh, will likely be back in 2025. The guy is competitive. Oh, he also has an overall victory at the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona. He wins in everything that he gets in at this point. It's no shock that he would have the amount of confidence that he has, and he's not wrong. His racing resume, as an all-around driver, he's better than Max. Has Max driven a bunch of cars on iRacing? Yeah, absolutely. Has he driven them in real life? No, so that's really what matters here. So when it comes down to it, yeah, Kyle Larson is a better all-around race car driver. Connor Zilich at 17, well, 18 now, has a better diverse racing resume than what Max does. And that's not a slide at Max. It's just the ladder that he was brought up in, um, you know, basically just pushed him straight through the open wheel ladder. He doesn't really have anything else outside of that where all of these guys, Kyle Larson, Connor Zilich, others included, have tried out a bunch of different types of racing and they're competitive in everything that they get in. So for Max, maybe his Formula One contract is holding him back. Maybe he doesn't want to do it. Maybe he wants to just focus on Formula One, which is a valid, you know, thing to do. But if he wants to be in the conversation as best all around race car driver, 
he should have to go out there and race multiple different things. But hey, he won the SB's driver of the year, which realistically means absolutely uh, nothing. What broadcast company carries Formula One in this country? Right. That would be ESPN. Of course, Max was going to win it. Why would it be Kyle Larson? Why would anybody put any bit of research in to understand that it would be Kyle Larson or even Ryan Blaney? Nah, not so much. But, you know, to say best driver, not really. Not really. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses, hat and shirt on today. Head over to drivensunglasses.com. Check out what they have on offer. Use code BREAKHEART for 20% off plus free shipping. I am very much a fan of the classic sunglasses as well as the camber sunglasses. These ones right here. So drivensunglasses.com, Josh Berry, SVG, myself. We all wear them. See if they have a pair that fits you today. Moving on to... Kurt Busch, he was arrested on Monday night for driving while intoxicated, uh, reckless driving, as well as speeding in Erdell, Erdell County. I don't know how you North Carolinians pronounce things. You say the word hickory is pronounced hickory. So I hope I got it right there. If I didn't, I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know on my pronunciation of the words in the South, which I am not from, clearly, as people have pointed out <laughs> to me in the past. But Kurt Busch was arrested. Highly unfortunate. Um, this reminds me of the time that Kurt Busch got arrested back in 2004 as well for the same exact thing. So for Kurt, I hope he's doing well. I hope he gets the help that he needs. I hope he's not headed down a dark path because this man has had quite the public image renaissance over the last like decade. Remember, he used to be the outlaw. He was frankly, an asshole. And I think he would probably admit that at this point, too. He was rude to people. His radioactive clips are absolutely legendary for him just going absolutely catatonic, just blowing up on the radio. I, he was Alec Baldwin talking to his daughter on the phone. That is a really old reference, but it popped into my head right there. But for Kurt, just yeah, I, I hope that he's doing all right. He, of course, had his career ended. He did not get to go out on his own terms a little over two years ago after that prac or qualifying crash at Pocono. And, you know, he still works for 2311 Racing. He's still a part of the team. Uh, I saw that he's been doing a lot of traveling, and I hope he's, I hope he's doing well. Really, that's what it comes down to. He put out a statement saying that he is disappointed in himself. He apologized to his family, to his team, to all the people around him. He said he wants to work with the county to make the roads a safer place. You know, a typical PR statement. But for Kurt, he has been a super good guy for the sport over the last probably 10 years, maybe a little bit under at this point. And I will say... I've seen him in the garage area a bunch of times. He could not be nicer to fans. He takes photos. He's always interacting. He always seems happy, uh, willing to stop and talk to just about anybody if he doesn't have like a commitment that he's trying to make it to. So yeah, for Kurt, I hope he gets the help he needs. I hope that uh, he's doing all right. Uh, I, I know it's probably an embarrassing thing to have happen. But yeah, Kurt Busch, uh, unfortunately, arrested for DWI. And moving on to the last topic of the day, that would be Richard Childress Racing. They announced that they plan to appeal Austin Dillon's penalty that NASCAR handed down on Wednesday. NASCAR, of course, stripped Austin Dillon of his playoff eligibility, let him keep the win from Sunday night at Richmond, also uh, penalized him 25 driver and owner points and suspended his spotter for three races. Do they have a chance of winning this appeal? That seems to be everybody's take on question on the Internet. And I would say, eh. Technically, the Chicago White Sox haven't been eliminated from the postseason yet, I don't believe. That's about as much chance as the as Austin Dillon does at winning this appeal. If you're not familiar, the White Sox are a historically bad team. They are so bad, in fact, that they are flirting with being the worst team in baseball in the modern era. Uh, so the chances of them making the postseason, not happening. For Austin Dillon, I think that the only chance they have of possibly winning this appeal, which I would set at maybe 5%, is the fact that this is a bit of an unprecedented penalty, that NASCAR hasn't handed one out like this. There's no previous examples of them having issued this penalty. So I could see that being uh, something that they could argue. But at the end of the day, I do not think the panel is going to view favorably in RCR's favor. For this, I think Austin Dillon will lose his playoff eligibility. I think that he is going to have to win over the next three races, whether that be Michigan, uh, Daytona, or Darlington. Things are not going well for RCR. And it honestly felt like NASCAR trolled RCR a little bit because at 3.19 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon, RCR put out this tweet, this video, and it said, we're still here. And it was a video of Austin Dillon with Freebird in the background. And some people are like, oh, that was RCR sending a cryptic message out. 
what I know about RCR's comms team over there, I'm sure they're fine people. They kind of shoot from the hip. And I don't think that they did this on purpose because why would you just allow everybody to dunk on you 40 minutes later when NASCAR put out their penalty report? I don't like I just don't don't see that angle of it because it really set people up, myself included, to just absolutely dunk on them 40 minutes later when the penalty report came out. So once again, like RCR said, this could not have come at a worse time. That tweet could not have come out at a worse time for when the penalty report came out. So they will appeal. They'll likely lose. I mean, they're not Hendrick Motorsports. Kidding. Kidding. Take off the tinfoil hats. Hendrick doesn't get favoritism often <laughs> just kidding just kidding for everybody freaks out uh yeah i don't think they're gonna win this appeal so let me know in the comments what you think about kyle larson's comments kurt bush and rcr appealing the austin dillon penalty like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram twitter and facebook at break hard blog